So it looks like everyone has themselves muted. In a minute, I'll mute myself as well. And um, I'll also turn off my video after we've done our introductions. Um, so I just want to start off. My name is Diane Fritz. I'm a consultant here with Neosystems. And um, I have the pleasure of just starting off uh, with some introductions. So iTrack and EnviroNZ started a business relationship back in 2016. New Zealand's leading waste and recycling company started off using iTrack for their safety contact iTrack and investigation process flows. Since then, they have been expanding the use of our safety solution every year to capture a range of health and safety practices, which include their collection, post collection, transfer stations, and quality controls. In 2019, iTrack introduced a training function for our EnviroNZ driver development program. A unique out-of-the-box approach was needed to meet the needs of an environmentally responsible and safe waste management company. A plan was implemented to create a smooth transition for management and their employees. Two phases were completed over several months and a third phase is planned for 2020. I am very pleased to introduce Paula and Shane of EnviroNZ to share this unique and interesting approach they have taken with iTrack and their driver development program. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, right, Diane. I'll kick off with um, yeah, introducing um, myself. So my name is Paula Awaki. I'm the Business Improvement Analyst at uh, EnviroNZ. I've been with EnviroNZ um, just, just over two and a half years now. So joined back in January 2018. Um, prior to that, I um, come from a fire safety and security um, background, worked for a company called um, Chubb, which some people might be familiar with, um, for 12 years in a variety of different roles. Um, sort of moved into um, continuous um, improvement um, programs while I was there, um, sort of developed a passion for process improvement. Um, so that's my role within EnviroNZ is looking at ways that we can improve processes um, and, and systems. So today Shane and I are going to share with you um, how EnviroNZ um, took the driver current driver training program that um, they operate for uh, their truck drivers um, and how we move that program into a, a digital environment um, using iTrack. And I'll hand you over to Shane who will introduce himself. Rightio, good morning everyone. Uh, good morning from New Zealand. It's probably good afternoon for you. Um, I've been involved with Enviro NZ since 2002. Uh, first of all as an employee, then more recently as a contractor or um, consultant. Um, I've been involved in a range of different projects over the years and over the last four years with the introduction and um, implementation of iTrack 365. Um, and then sort of more development after the inter inter uh, implementation. I uh, really enjoyed working with Neo Systems over this period. Diane and the rest of the team there have been great, and um, we've really appreciated the support and assistance we've had from Neo Systems. And this, it's been a point of conversation within Enviral Waste compared with some of our other IT providers and for other projects we've been undertaking. Me personally, I have a lovely wife and two amazing daughters. I enjoy spending time with them. I do a range of exercise and outdoor activities. Um, multi-sport adventure racing and I'm a volunteer surf lifeguard in the summer. It's going into winter here now so we don't uh, spend too much water at the beach. And lastly before we kick off, um, I'd re I really resonated with many of the project management points Kevin Collins from Secure raised this morning. Um, but I do have one issue with something, one point he made and I, that is I think that EnviroNZ might be Diane and Neo Systems favourite customer. So. <laughs> Those of you that heard his, he thought they were. So I'm just disputing that. Anyway, Paula, <laughs> all yours now. Okay, so. thank you. Right, so what we'll run for you, um, through for you today is a quick glance at um, what EnviroNZ is, what we do, a little bit about the driver training um, program, um, the problem that we identified, uh, why and Byron Z decided to choose iTrack to move their processes for that program into a um, electronic automated system. 
a little bit about the solution um, and just a little bit also about our process that we went through um, in terms of the implementation. Then Shane's going to jump in and do a demonstration for you all on um, how the program now works with an eye track on the devices that are in the portal. And then um, lastly, how we've taken the data that we now have for the training program in iTrack and using that for reporting in Power BI. OK, so in Byron Z, um, we have 900 to well, up to about 900 staff within the company around um, 35 branches across um, New Zealand um, and operating a fleet around 550 um, vehicles, you know, which of those vehicles are primarily our, our trucks. Um, our core business is collection of waste, uh, recycling and organics from businesses and communities across um, New Zealand. We also specialise in the collection of treatment, uh, the collection, treatment and disposal of hazardous waste. Um, we operate or own and operate a number of waste transfer stations and landfills around the country and we operate under three brands, Enviro Waste, Enviro Way and Chem Waste. Okay, so the truck driver training program um, has existed um, within the Enviro Waste um, business, which is primarily our collections business since 2017. So it operates um, with nine driver trainers across um, New Zealand, and those nine driver trainers train up to 460 uh, truck drivers. Um, they carry out around 6,500 different types of um, assessments per year. So they range from pre-employment assessments, driver observations, and driver competency assessments, and standard operating competency assessments. It's a really successful, comprehensive truck driver training program. Um, what we did is we, we recognised that um, there was an issue around um, the more of the sort of the, the administration and the back office part of the program um, where we kind of sit within the business where we've got close, um, I guess, relationships with the health and safety department and um, poor administrator in that safe, uh, health and safety department spent um, a lot of time receiving paper records of um, the training assessments and having to manually enter those assessments um, into a system. So we thought, well, let's have a look at what we can do to sort of improve that part of the uh, of the process. So um, we conducted some analysis and what we did is we, we just took the whole program and we um, looked at each step of the process um, right from the very beginning where a driver trainer, you know, needs to um, you know, print a form um, which will become the assessment form and carry out the assessment and then what they do with that form, what systems they use um, to uh, record um, the uh, training assessment, how they um, then send that assessment through to an administrator and then how that is recorded. So what we found is there was a lot of non-value add manual administration tasks. There was lots of variations in recording, um, mainly because a lot of the forms were handwritten. So you know there was um, handwriting issues, um, wrong information um, entered in which translated um, into when the information was entered into the system. And there were some variations in forecasting and scheduling um, with nine driver trainers. Each of those driver, tra tra driver trainers had their own version of their um, training matrices, what they used to record, um, which drivers needed to be trained when, um, and there was a variety of different paper forms. So very, very manual and admin heavy. OK, so after that analysis, what we what we found is that we we're basically drowning in paper. So the program um, purely paper based. Um, so 
around 16,000 paper forms were generated annually. And these are, you know, the variety of forms that are used to um, recall driver observations, um, uh, truck driver annual assessments, um, standard operating company assessments. They were all, all paper. Um, some may have been filled out um, using, um, you know, basically pen and paper, others um, on a on um, a system, but primarily they were all paper forms that were printed. Um, the training records entered mainly up to six and a half thousand records imported, inputted per year. Um, what the driver trainers were doing were collating their paperwork each week, um, taking that paperwork, um, scanning it into an email, saving it into a folder, sending it up to an administrator who would then have to print and um, decipher what was on the paper before entering it into the system. So the driver trainers were spending about 20% of their time completing administration tasks, which was, you know, we estimated a cost at around about 800 New Zealand dollars per year in driver training administration time. And what I haven't mentioned there is the standard operating uh, procedures for, for the truck. So around 30 different standard operating procedures, which were assessed annually with the driver trainers, um, could be up to 30 pages long. They were also printed. So, you know, generated over 25,000 pieces of paper every year. So a few trees there. Okay, so why, why iTrack? So iTrack is already widely used by EnviroNZ. It is the health and safety management system for um, EnviroNZ. Um, it also provides, provides a training competency uh, product as part of its existing platform. So we saw that as, you know, a positive. We, we um, have, I think, up to or over 800 users of iTrack across environs then so it's already a very familiar um, piece of software that's used um, it's used by our field um, our drivers and our operators so um, there was no need to sort of con to have a new piece of software introduced into the business and the software is very flexible we've we've been able to adapt um, the functionality of um, iTrack and certainly in my experience over the last two years um, you know, it's definitely met our needs in terms of where we needed to fit um, to the software and what we're using the forms for to um, meet the needs of our business. And the product's also scalable, so it allowed us to phase in um, other training training groups. So I think Diane mentioned that we were sort of phase two. So phase three, we're looking at um, incorporating our training program for our machine operators. Um, into a digitised format using the same program that we've developed for the truck drivers. We also thought that the portal, portal views were very important. It provided, you know, the driver trainers as well as the managers um, the ability to see real time how um, the training was progressing for their drivers, um, what was coming up in terms of certification. Um, you know, before we did this exercise, we were relying on, well, they were relying on, you know, Excel spreadsheets of information. So not necessarily always up to date and not always really available. Um, and also the iTrack software, you know, being built using Microsoft Dynamics 365 um, also allows us to leverage off, um, you know, 365, what was 365 products such as Microsoft Power BI. So the Power BI, we've been able to take the data and um, develop a Power BI report for the driver training manager. Okay, so um, the solution, basically the transfer or well, the project objective was to transfer uh, the existing robust driver training program into a system driven environment and um, using um, our iTrack platform. So therefore, you know, looking at eliminating all the non-value add activities and al allowing our driver trainers to do what they do best um, was, was out there training and assessing our truck drivers. So what we what we did is we um, developed electronic assessment. So we took the paper, uh, paper assessment forms that our driver trainers had to print each time they scheduled in a, a training session with the driver, 
They could then do that assessment um, out in the field with the drivers using the mobile app um, that replaced all the, the printed paper forms. The same with the electronic questionnaires. So with the standing operating procedures um, to test competency, there's a questionnaire for each um, standing operating procedure and also as part of our foundation training. So we took those forms, converted them into electronic, which also are available on the devices that the driver trainers can do in cab with the drivers out in the field. Again, replacing all those printed paper forms. Our electronic standard operating procedures, well, our standard operating procedures, we um, link them to SharePoint within um, the forms within iTrack. So this obviously uh, removed the need to print pages and pages of standard operating procedures. It always, uh, sorry, it also ensured that um, our driver trainers were using the latest version of the standard operating procedure. Um, as we know, as soon as a standard operating procedure is printed, it's non-controlled. So it may not necessarily be the most up-to-date version that they're being trained on. Um, automated workflows creating training records. I mean, this is huge. Um, you know, six and a half thousand um, entries into a system that was done manually by an administrator basically has been removed from the process, been by able to automate all of that using um, iTrack. And, you know, in addition to that, it provides in the real time um, training progress um, for the driver trainers um, and removing all the printing and scanning and the email and the data entry from that process. Uh, the portal visibility of employee training progression. So within the portal, we've set up views specific to the driver trainer um, that can see the progress for their drivers, um, what's been completed, what's coming up for recertification. Um, the driver training managers can see a complete view of all his driver trainers and how they're progressing, um, where training has become, uh, which has lapsed and he needs to follow up on. That's all now really readily available to him, um, where previously it was all manually updated spreadsheets. So those have all been removed. Yeah, and lastly, the Power BI reporting, um, the National Driver Training Manager each year we have to report up to CKI, which is our parent company in China. Um, we would probably spend, well, he would spend weeks collating information based on manual sort of reports and uh, your reports throughout the year. So, you know, take and also two to three days per month collating a month in report. So now that that has all been replaced with um, having all that information I track that we can now pull through. Um, to Power BI. Okay, so just quickly around the implementation process, this is a process that um, Shane and I went through. Um, we initially, after the analysis, you know, we had identified that, you know, we need to do something here. We need to look at digitizing these, these man manual forms. We got together with the National Driver Training Manager we sat down and identified and documented all his business requirements. We got the driver trainers involved as well. From there, um, you know, which I think was really key in the whole project was we were able to use a test system, the iTrack test system, to basically develop the framework of the program. We had two driver trainers um, within our Auckland area close to us who got involved in that. They actually started to carry out some assessments down the field. Um, they they ran a kind of dual system for a while, so they still completed the paper form, but they they, well, they actually what they did, sorry, is they printed um, the, the form that they did within the test system so we could still get that through to our administrator, but it, it allowed them to actually use the device and use the form, provide feedback. Um, and once we had a good kind of grasp of the system, how it worked, we used that as evidence within our business case. And it was a you know, really um, seamless process in terms of being able to submit our business case and get that signed off because we'd already proved the concept. We proved that we can convert um, the paper, we can we can prove the efficiencies that we got from using um, iTrack and the digitized forms and the workflows and the time saved 
um, for the driver trainers, basically adding 20% productivity to our driver trainers. OK, so once the business case was signed off, we um, did some further development. So, so Shane and Diane were very involved in this part um, of the project. Um, you know, we were able to um, very quickly have sort of issues resolved with um, Shane and Diane working working together and coming up with solutions. And once we had a you know fully developed framework in place, we carried out UAT with our driver trainers and piloted. A lot of the pilot work and the user acceptance testing had been done as part of our proof of concept as well. Um, um, and then we, we just carried out training with the other driver trainers up and went live. So all in all, this is a 12 week project. So um, in terms of you know an IT implementation, a very quick turnaround time. Um, from the time that we sort of gathered the business requirements to the business case sign off to implementation. And we kicked off in um, August, uh, August 2019. And by December 2019, all of our driver trainers, all of our truck drivers, all of our training records were now electronic um, and all forms digitized. What we also did is we um, uploaded 12 months of previous training records into iTrack, which allowed um, our driver trainers and our national driver tra training manager to have a full year's view of training and um, also meant that all of our recertifications were now um, automated in the system. Okay, so now to the exciting part after I've been talking, um, Shane will demonstrate the following, he'll um, demonstrate how the assessment and the observation electronic forms work on the device, on the mobile app, um, also the electronic SOP questionnaires and take you through what the port of views for the driver trainers and managers look like. So over to you, Shane. Right, I will just share my screen. Oh. Right. OK. OK, so to kind of kick things off, um, as Paula said, we um, did quite a lot of analysis at the beginning. One of the things that we did with that was we um, um, mapped out the processes um, with the different aspects of our driver training system. Um, and then we identified what we needed to do and how it needed to work. Um, we, we looked at the, both the training and the procedures module, modules pretty thoroughly in iTrack. Um, and in the end, we decided to go with a, a slightly different model where we would do the assessments using a form in iTrack. Um, and then from there, the, um, there's a variety of workflow processes that um, kick off and they'll create training records and they'll generate emails and, and notify managers and, and those kind of things, um, contact our people and culture team um, in certain circumstances. Um, and um, in one case where there's a pre-solo assessment done which might need to be repeated um, it creates a, a task for the um, driver trainer as a reminder to reassess them in two weeks time um, the uh, the we 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 modeled this program um, with uh, two of our driver trainers that are in auckland uh, based in auckland where we are um, but we spent a lot of time consulting with all of the driver trainers as um, paula said and also with the national driver training manager um, and um, and what, one of the things that came through the, the testing and modeling, um, and we ran it, actually ran with the two driver trainers we were testing with, we had them running it in test um, and um, doing all of their um, assessments and tests so that we could um, um, see how it worked. And one of the things we identified is we had a group of people that weren't um, employees that we were still assessing as on an ongoing basis. So for example, we have, um, owner drivers um, that will own their own truck and they'll have their own business and they work full time for Embora Waste. And some of them would have relief drivers um, for when they are away. And so it's those relief drivers aren't employees in Embora Wastes. So we um, identified that as a bit of a gap and we're able to um, build that into the system um, using the context facility in um, Dynamics. 
So anyway, that's a bit of a run through on that. As um, Paula said, I'm going to go through a bit of a demonstration now. So hopefully the tech will go well, but um, you can see there a picture of my phone screen. Um, so I've just opened it up and, and it's already an eye track I, to speed things up. So we are going to have a bit of a look at our driver development system, um, which is um, at the bottom there. And under that system, you can see we've got um, seven forms, I think that's seven or is it eight? Um, and those sort of go through the different steps and, and part, parts of the process there. We've got the buddy driver checklist, um, when people first start with Enviro Waste or Enviro NZ as drivers, they go through a, a buddy um, driving program. Once they've finished that, they get assessed on a pre-solo. Um, um, and that, as the name says, um, um, certifies them to be able to drive on their own. Uh, the next form down there we can create, um, we've given our, uh, our driver trainers the ability to create a permanent contract worker, so it's someone that wouldn't be employed as an employee, um, and it creates, creates them as a, a contact um, in, in CRM, in Dynamics. Uh, we have a driver observation form, I'm going to demonstrate that one. We've got a driver training request, which is used on occasions. They do foundation training with the drivers, which is kind of the very first part um, and part of the induction into um, Enviro NZ. Um, Pre-employment all happens right at the beginning, and um, so drivers get assessed um, before they even get employed, um, and that's part of their employment process. Um, and um, as part of that, uh, process there's a there's a, a workflow there that forwards it through to the people and culture team so if the uh, driver is then employed um, they they um, process the record and um, and it starts a training record for that um, new driver uh, <coughs> excuse me the driver training and competency assessment that encompasses a range of different activities I'm going to demonstrate that one and also the truck SOPs and I'll explain all of that a bit later on so oh, all right. Uh, so just going on with the um, driver observation program. Um, so the forms that we've created are, are reasonably simple. Um, they follow a, a fairly similar model. So when the driver trainers use them, um, you know, from one form to the other, they're all fairly similar. So the first thing they choose is whether it's an employee or a relief driver. And then based on that, it then gives us the ability either to have a text field for a relief driver or it picks someone from the employee list. So I'm going to use Paula as my demonstration driver. Um, so this is actually in our live system as well. Um, uh, the live system's slightly better than the test system, so I thought I would show you on that. Um, and then they go through and capture a range of details, such as the type of vehicle. Um, in this case, Paula's going to be a gantry driver. I'm the, going to be the driver trainer, and she's going to be based at our Auckland Collections branch. Today, the date populates automatically. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, location of the observation would be maybe on road, is what I'm going to say. And um, my expectation is that it will take 30 minutes. Of course, we're going to do it a bit more quickly than that. Uh, if I keep going down, um, the next thing is our driver observation system is, as the name suggests, we're observing the drivers in action. So there's two types. There's an in-field um, um observation where the driver trainer and um, our driver trainers hate me using this term but covertly um, assess the driver so they're watching usually from a bit of a distance they're watching what the driver's doing how it's behaving quite often the drivers spot the driver trainers um, and that becomes a bit of a game for them um, it doesn't matter if it's covert or not they're just there observing it's not a um, it's not a capture and punish kind of arrangement it's a capture and coach um, kind of arrangement Capture is possibly not the right word. Um, and the other um, part there is desktop. They can do it from their offices. Um, all of our um, trucks have a um, range of different um, cameras in them. Um, some of the um, trucks for different purposes have got up to eight cameras. Um, not all of them in the cab, um, but they all have something in the cab. And from the in-cab cameras, the driver trainers can um, watch the drivers. Um, and, um, you know, and associated with that also, we have a a system for fatigue management. Um, the trucks are actually pretty sophisticated units. Anyway, I'm going to start off with an in-field um, observation. So you can see there my in-field um, observations brought up a, a range of um, new things to edit. Um, and so there's some checklists in there. So if I tap on the PPE one, um, it's very simple for them to complete. They just do and they tap. 
and then they select yes or no. So it's quickly done. If they select no, it comes up red. I select yes. And then back to the main form. And then it summarizes the results here on the, on the, on the driver trainer's phone. Um, the behavior and the SOP questions work much the same. Um, I won't go through and collect, um, check them all off, um, but you can see they work. They have the same thing. And the SOP, that's just a, a follow-up with the SOP. We'll talk about those a bit later on. Um, <clears throat> they can put attachments in there, such as photos. Um, it's quite handy. They can make comments. Um, and then there's a little um, requirement for them to provide feedback to the driver every time. So it's not a, when I say covert, there's always the feedback to the driver, whether it's positive or, or, or an improvement opportunity. <clears throat> and that is that form. Obviously, at the end of that, they tap on the tick at the top. It goes through um, a workflow process. Um, it will generate a record in forms. Um, for this, there's no training record created um, because it's not really considered training. It's just an observation. And then um, and the form moves on. I won't tap the tick in this case because, um, as I said, we're in the live system and I don't want it to go through and delete it later. <laughs> for um, the driver competency assessment, I'm actually going to go to one to, to speed things up that I created earlier. Here it is here. Um, so I've populated that same area at the beginning um, in here. Um, the difference with this one here is that they also capture a photo of the license. Um, so you can see there, um, there's a, um, and there's two views, the back and the front of the license. Um, I've gone through and completed this. The checklist looks pretty much the same as the other one. Um, you can see it works really well. And uh, we've had the feedback from the driver trainers on the system has been fantastic. They love it, um, which is great. You know, you can't get better feedback from your end than that from your end user. Um, at the bottom of it pulls up an assessment result. Um, you can see I had one red one here. Uh, where is it? Back up here. There it is. Um, and then there's the ability for the driver trainer to make a comment um, and the driver to make a comment. And then at the bottom of that, we have a signature field. And so the driver trainer would have put their signature in it. We'll just do that. And then the driver also puts their signature similarly in there. So that's the truck driver competency. Um, and the other one I prepared earlier was the truck SOPs. These are slightly different. Um, at the beginning, we capture that same information. Um, and then after that, we go to, into an assessment uh, process. This is typically done by the driver trainer on their own phone, and they ask the questions to the driver, and then and they give them a multi-choice answer. So um, in this case, I assessed Paul against the front load assessment, and the multi-choice answers uh, you can see come up down here. Um, so some of them are really obvious. A VCR stands for vehicle check report. It's something that they do before and after every day's driving. Um, and again, you can see the right and wrong answers are either red or green. Um, and what's a percent at the bottom? Our driver training, national driver training manager wasn't overly happy about that, but I said to him, well, um, I said to him, it just allows your driver trainer just to make sure that they're, everyone's at 100% before they're considered competent. Um, and then they assess them as either competent or not yet competent. Um, in this case, our, our pass rate is 100%. Um, um, and so there might be a retrain and assessment. And again, um, down here, you can see we've got the ability for the driver and the driver trainer to put their signature in with a little bit of a um, um, explanatory note in there. So that is, that is the demo of the phone. I don't think I've missed anything out from my plan there. So if I now move on to portal, oh, sorry, I forgot to close, shut off my notifications. So this is our portal. Um, I've signed in here as a driver trainer. His name's Dave Sanford. Um, and so when he logs in, this is his view. Um, he can see these same forms um, on his portal. And as well as that, um, we can jump into the view of the forms. Um, and his, he set up his um, default view as the driver trainer view. And then he can see all of the forms. So the driver trainers have access to all of the forms from all of the other driver trainers. Um, since we've been running this, we went live in about October 
October, November last year, um, we've produced 2,400 and something or other um, forms uh, from the driver trainer program. So generating a lot of electronic documents. Um, so all of the driver trainers can see each other because they do sometimes cover for each other. Um, we might, um, if we start off a new contract and we employ 30 new drivers or something like that, we'll have um, two or three driver trainers all converge on that one site. Um, and then they'll run a two week training program to get all the new people um, up to speed with our gear and, and with our other things. Oh, something I forgot to mention before, um, the truck SOPs um, with our drivers, um, the driver assessment aspect is purely about the drive. Um, so it's how they operate the truck on the road um, um, or reversing or maneuvering around a site, things like that. The truck SOP is more to do with the equipment on the back of the truck. So, for example, if it's a front load truck, they have forks at the front. It picks up a bin which gets raised over the cab of the truck and dropped into a hopper just behind the cab. Um, if it's a low entry vehicle, um, they might drive left hand or right hand side. They're usually dual, dual steer. Um, the driver in the, if he's operating on the left hand side in New Zealand here, we drive on the left hand side of the road. Um, if the driver's driving from the left hand um, side of the uh, truck, he's in a standing position um, and he stands on a plate that if he steps off, it puts the brakes on on the truck. Um, but they have a, um, there's a, there's a bar across the door that they can't actually get out the door until um, the truck is fully stationary. When they hop out, they jump out, they'll, they'll or they climb and they step out carefully is the idea. Um, they'll collect a, a, a residential rubbish bin and then there's a hopper just behind, they'll pop it onto a bin lifter and they'll put the, uh, they'll tip the bin or they'll throw sometimes the bags or it might be a recycling crate. Um, they'll empty the contents into the hopper. That's kind of how that works. So the, the gear on the back of the truck um, is what the truck SOP is for and the actual driver assessment stuff is more to do with the ch cab and chassis operations. Right, so sorry, a little bit of an interlude there. Um, back to Dave. Um, so he can see all of the um, all of the driver training records, and so um, and so can the managers can see their own ones as they relate to their um, team. Um, so they can just go through there and they can look back and through that, see the actual assessments. Um, Dave can then pop into training um, um, part of the portal, and he can see what refreshes are due, for example, when he's got quite a few there. Um, we've actually, some of these pre-solos will be expired. Um, Neo Systems has written a bit of custom code for us on this, um, which um, took us a long time to actually settle on how it might work. And poor old Diane and Malik went through lots of iterations of, of what the what it might look like till they finally produced exactly what we wanted. Um, um, I've had it for a couple of months. I haven't, I haven't actually tested it. I need to put it in place yet. I've been a bit slack on that, but yeah. No doubt Paul will crack the stick. Um, so that's, or the driver trainers can see all training. So in this case, in this view, they can see everything that is approved. They can see any tra um, training that may have been canceled or training that's been superseded. So for example, um, a, a superseded record has usually been taken over by either a repeat of the same thing or perhaps the next step in the process. So in this case, a buddy training a buddy driver assessment would have been superseded by a um, pre-solo, um, which you can see for Andy Elgra. He had a buddy training here on a hooker truck, and then there was a pre-solo. So the pre-solo would have superseded the buddy training. And then he's also an annual assessment, which should have pre uh, pre um, superseded the um, pre-solo, sorry, um, which is the tool that Malik's developed for us. Um, okay, I'll oh, remember that. Sorry, sorry, shut up. Um, the other one is my drivers. Um, so the driver trainers have um, a view specifically there, and that just limits them to the drivers that they're directly responsible for, which uses the uh, reviewed by field and the employee record. And so you can see in um, Dave's price, uh, situation here, he's got a list of drivers. Um, one of the things that's really useful is this recertify date in the traffic light system. So you can see there's a whole lot here that are good. Um, there's a coming due, one here for the 7th of June, um, and there's a couple here that are overdue uh, for very, oh, they're pre solo. So again, that comes back to me. Um, we use the contacts field, as I was saying. So you'll see right at the bottom here, there's a couple of contacts. 
Um, oh, no, there's not. It must have been on someone else's view. Um, so here obviously hasn't got any relief drivers down there. Um, we use the team view, although not to the same extent. Um, so for Dave, it defaults to review. Um, if he clicks on the training, um, you can see there's just a bit of a summary of where things are at. Um, we're not tending to use the training tasks at this point, um, not for this process. Um, as we, the driver trainers are managing it and uh, rather than the employees. So you can see that we've got a range of approved people um, and we've got one coming due here for Dave. And um, that's one to 10 of page of 58. So that's, that's the driver trainers uh, uh, material, how Dave would look at his as one of the driver trainers. If I jump onto another screen, um, you can see I've got an operations manager here, Ian. Again, this is the live system. So these are all the forms that would have been done for the people that report to Ian. Um, it's quite a, it's a much shorter list. Um, but again, Ian can jump into training and he can see all of the training for his team. So Ian is an Auckland Collections Operations Manager with three of them. He can see the training records for all three of the operations managers because they do tend to cover for each other as well. It's a bit of flexibility. And again, you can see this traffic, like the traffic light system. Dave, uh, I was talking about he um, as a driver trainer in the South Island, um, whereas um, Ian's up in the North Island. So these are two different parts of the country. So if you're wondering why some of these don't match, that's why. Um, and, um, and so he can see all of the training records there uh, for um, all of the Auckland Collections people. And the other view that he might use is this training due to expire in 90 days. And so he can see a bit of a shot of what's going ahead. Um, I, one, one of the things that we really love about this is the fact that we can filter these views, uh, we can sort these views and we can group these views. So for example, we could just look at, we could just filter all on our annual assessments here. Oh. And now we can just see a list of the annual assessments and where they're up to. And you can see that there's a couple here. Unfortunately, the driver trainers were all locked down for a couple of months like the rest of us. So they've some of their assessments have slipped behind. So they're working flat out trying to catch up on those, those things as well. Right, so that's the operations manager. Oh, also he can use the team function. And as you can see, it's got for reporting. Um, and if we look at the training uh, perspective here, you can see a bit of a shot there. Again, we're not using the training tasks, we're using He's got one coming due and he's got a bunch there that are all um, approved and good to go. So that's pretty much um, it. Um, looking forward, as um, Diane said, and as I think Paula said as well, um, we're looking forward to taking this into our yellow gear, um, our machine operating. We've got a number of bulldozers um, and um, loaders, excavators on our landfill sites and in our transfer stations, materials handlers. There's about, I think we've broken it down to about 15 different machine types. Um, Pre-lockdown, we were due to kick that program off sort of April, May. Um, unfortunately, that's been delayed at the moment. Um, so we're looking forward to moving that forward. Um, we're also thinking that we'd like to, to, I'd like to take our customer service representative uh, training and put it into um, the iTrack system. Um, so we've got another project looking forward there um, and um, and then um, following on from that, uh, the, the um, bits and bobs and odd, odd bits of training that get done as well. Some of the health and safety training, um, there's a range of different programs. Um, we then, you know, that's our sort of phase five, I guess, is to move that all in to um, iTrack. So that's where we're at. Thanks, Shane. I've just got one one last slide, or so I'll just quickly share my screen. Um, so, lastly, um, uh, is our last slide is just around our Power BI reporting. So let's just try to open. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, just to finish off, so we're, with all the information now that's within ITRAC, we can deliver some, you know, nice reports for our uh, managers and our, our national driver training manager. Um, the report is a work in progress, um, but it has removed all the manual intervention that the national driver ma training manager has had to do in the past. It just gives him an instant overview of how his driver trainers are tracking across each of the assessments. Um, how many assessments have been carry out, carried out um, or different types of assessments, how they've been carried out. He can look that, at that as a year to date or monthly progress. He can break that down by driver trainer, he could break it down by branch. Um, he could also go into the individual drivers and have a look um, at what assessments have been completed, if there's any um, issues around um, incidents. Um, in the near future, the report will be uh, will evolve and show um, recertifications, what's due, what's overdue. So um, it provides us a really good platform for the National Driver Training Manager to understand how his driver trainers are progressing and um, the training program overall for our drivers. So that's that, everyone. Um, thanks. Um, for joining us and your time. Um, just want to finish off by thanking Shane and Diane for helping with getting this project over the line. Um, it was really a really good pro project, very significant for EnviroNZ. It, it's probably one of the first major projects that's transformed paper into digital for us, and it sort of opened the door for other projects as um, what Shane has said. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Paul and Shane. We really appreciate your time and putting this together. It was a great presentation, and I know a lot of us really enjoyed the uh, the information. Um, I know we ran a little bit over, and another session has already started, but if anyone has questions, um, please feel free to, to raise your hand or um, put it in the chat window. Hey, hey uh, Paula, Shane, Diane, I have a question over here. Perfect. Yep. This sure. is uh, my name is uh, Thomas Zanino. I'm part of the Microsoft Canada team. Um, so great to to learn about um, how you're working with iTrack 365. Um, it's, it's amazing. And and for for myself, I'm I'm more of a knowledge expert of some of the technology underlying um, uh, iTrack. Uh, I just wanted to ask if if you were working with anyone from the Microsoft team in New Zealand at the moment. Um, and if so, I'd, I'd love to, if, if not, I'd love to make that connection. Um, if so, I, I'd just love to have, just have a, have a conversation and just see how we can make sure that uh, the local team knows um, how you're leveraging this. It's honestly, it, it's great to see. No, yeah, that'd be wonderful, thanks. It would be wonderful. We're not working with anyone locally. Um, our yeah, we probably just need to, um, sorry, just jump in there that um, for Thomas is to, probably um, put you in contact with our head of technology might be the best way to go with regard to that. Um, see what um, current contacts um, he may have with, um, um, you know, Microsoft through um, his, his dealing with the te technology. As Shane said, it, we, we aren't dealing with anyone directly with Microsoft. So yeah, definitely would be great to, to get in contact. So, um, you know, if um, you'd like to flick us your details and we'll um, get in contact with you and introduce you to our head of technology as well, which would probably be the best start. Absolutely, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get connected through Trevor and, and we'll get connected and, and small follow-up question. Shane, were you wearing a Canadian hat in your picture? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> okay, I, didn't, I, I like wasn't what, imagining I things. I got that a couple of years ago by the team there um, at Christmas time. And it does get a fair bit of use, to be fair. <laughs> ah, very, very good, yeah. very good. Uh, I don't, I, I don't have any New Zealand attire myself, but uh, <laughs> I, I, where there are a number of of uh, uh, folks from New Zealand on the Microsoft Canada team, uh, so so I've, uh, I, I have, I think I'm bound to 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 be. I think I, I have to say that I'm al quite allied with New Zealand, absolutely, because a lot of my management team is from New Zealand. Um, oh, right. But this is, this is wonderful. It's wonderful to see uh, how you're leveraging this and and how this is driving health and safety in your organization. Really eye opening for me. So so thank you very much. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's great. Does anyone else have any other questions, questions or comments?
Okay. Well, I, like I said, Paula and Shane, I really appreciate your time. It's always a pleasure to work um, with you. I love to see uh, what has come out of all of our work. I love the Power BI report. It's really impressive. And I also really love the slide of all the paper that we've been able to reduce. It's really nice to see um, what was and where we end up with, mm -hmm. at the end of a project. Um, so it's been a wonderful journey and I know we're going to have quite a few more coming up in the future. So um, I really appreciate your time today and all the work that you put into the presentation. So have a great Friday for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, if you're able to jump on any of our other sessions, please do. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Thank Diane. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Shane. Bye.